reading, lots of f***ing reading, like Blade Runner levels of reading. We'll unlock the escape capsule when you secure the samples. Which means you'll definitely be dead after the first scene. They really missed a chance to cast Drew Barrymore in this role. I like how they hired a person to write this movie about giant animals destroying cities, and that person's first thought was, SPACE, OBVIOUSLY! Wow, I didn't think anyone would be able to challenge the quality of the CGI in Geostorm, but you proved me wrong, movie. That escape pod is traveling in an extremely specific, straight, and convenient line for her to be able to witness the station's destruction through this tiny-ass window with basically steady cam view. Jumanji 3, welcome to the rampage! Connor, don't move! F***ing Connor. <laughs> And so begins what is roughly 936 progressively louder roars of dominance. Can someone do a supercut of these replaced by me sighing during the sin narration? The thought of that happening almost makes watching this movie bearable. He's not gonna kill you. He has a unique sense of humor. I know this is played for laughs, but the lack of information about George could seriously have killed Connor. I know he's a dillweed and all, but you don't have to play with his f***ing life. He's in your troop now. I want you to welcome him. But not badly enough to wait until you can turn around and can see me signing this information. Movie has time for this. I started using this new vegan deodorant. How's that? Mm, it smells like guacamole. Ladies and gentlemen, written by three screenwriters and Carlton Cuse. What the f*** is he driving? It's like an SUV got monochromatic and then added tractor wheels. I can't even tell what this is overcompensating for. Jesus Christ, you mean that even though that tiny ass escape pod exploded, they made these canisters to be impervious to re-entry? Pick a lane, movie. Either you're gonna try and make a somewhat believable origin story for the rampaging later on, or you're just gonna blow toxic smoke up our asses. Huh, these canisters seem to be actively selecting wildlife preservations for their landing spots. George clearly attended the Alien franchise school of touching alien things. Is this seriously all the divides of the gorillas from the grizzly bears? Like, couldn't either species figure out how to lift an easily movable lever to open the door? How has this confrontation not happened before, even by accident? Is he gonna shoot the giant white ape through the rock? I know you thought you blocked this well enough so it would look like he was pointing the gun at the ape and not the rock, but you did not block this well enough. Go back and do it again. You need to get over in the grill enclosure. You'd better come take a look at this cliche. We were doing our morning rounds and uh, found this. Their morning rounds? These assholes were completely green yesterday and are working in an extremely unstable environment for anyone other than Davis. But they're allowed to check the grounds by themselves now? Awesome, someone thought to use protection while picking up a foreign, possibly alien container of a possibly hazardous substance. Sure, nobody has on even the most rudimentary safety equipment, but hey, at least he's using a plastic bag. What is it? It's a tesseract. I mean an allspark. I mean a molnir. I don't know. We gotta figure it out. Do you? Like, do you gotta figure it out? Why not the authorities or scientists you immediately tell about this and hand this over to? Why can't they gotta figure it out? Somebody finds that sample, it leads straight back to us. Jason Sudeikis' little brother would be excellent at CinemaSins. Putting the actual Rampage arcade game in your Rampage movie based on that game, even if it's only a quick easter egg, breaks the fabric of your movie space-time continuum all to hell. There's a reason we were doing these experiments in space, and it wasn't exactly for the betterment of humanity. This implies you are doing them in space because they are illegal, and that's an incredibly stupid reason to spend tens of billions of dollars on a space station. <laughs> He's such a badass, he literally drives with an unholstered handgun in his right hand. <laughs> I mean, why do you even need to put scars on his arm and hand at that point? Scar schmars, he was driving with a gun in his hand. What's up, Burke? Wyoming. Ah, uh, never been. Animals love it. You'll fit right in. Okay, when this scene opened, we learned they are in Colorado. And Colorado is very similar to Wyoming in terms of terrain. It's literally right above Colorado. So close that I find it hard to believe Doofus here has never been to Wyoming. But even if he hasn't, living in Colorado this close to Wyoming should mean he doesn't need to be told what Wyoming is like. So you just wanted some banter that sounded clever and let one of these meatheads call another one of the meatheads an animal and have everyone laugh while the chopper takes off. Like, this is exactly the kind of thing we started making these videos about. Because it's lazy and it gives the appearance of being a screenplay when it's really just bad junior high writing. Hmm, I wonder what this person is studying. I mean, damn, this lady's got genetics books lying literally all over her apartment. What you're looking at is dramatic video of a fireball. It is thought to be debris from last night's Athena One tragedy. It's unclear if this is related to one of the park's gorillas escaping the enclosure at the sanctuary earlier this morning. That is a lot of exposition crammed into a local news broadcast that would definitely be more focused on the giant space station explosions. That is not the George we know. Great, so can we get to some goddamn rampaging already? You mean this? Oh. Please tell me you had that tested for residual particulates. Yeah, right, lady. We do science a little differently around these parts. Demonstrating levels of aggression you don't see in his species. But that whole f***ing first scene in the wildlife sanctuary was all about the gorilla aggression, right? The grizzly bear, the most powerful terrestrial predator on the planet. How do you determine the most powerful terrestrial predator? Is it jaw strength? How long it can go without eating? Kick strength? How much it can bench press? I don't doubt a grizzly is a bad mother. But in defense of the lions, silverbacks, crocs, boa constrictors, and hippos of the world, we need to set some firm criteria before just summarily defining the grizzly as the most powerful predator. Are you familiar with CRISPR? Yeah, genetic engineering. Uh, it's more like
light genetic editing. Check this out. Extremely intelligent geneticist immediately turns to Wikipedia to tell Davis about genetic editing because it's got pictures of sharks and <laughs> Along with increased size, speed, and agility, the CRISPR edits also turn you into a jump-scaring dick. <laughs> See, in a better movie, I might remove a sin here for causing a good laugh, but the problem here is science fiction that is trying to be grounded in the real world. This isn't the f***ing Simpsons. So now I have to assume that has literally happened before, and that makes me angry. I liked this movie the first time I saw it, when it was called Rise of the Mighty Joe Skyscraper. Burke to base. Red page one is down. Roll credits. They're in a hurry. What do you think, Spook? If the deer were spooked, then why the f*** were they running to the giant wolf and not away from it? I know the wolf's been super juiced for power and speed and all that bullshit. But is there something in that gas that makes a giant monster completely silent until they're ready to pounce? Tom Cruise would have landed it, I bet. Brother, I'm gonna prance myself right out on the limb and guess that no one's ever accused you of being a people person. Well, how about you take these cuffs off and you find out yourself? Movie slips in some rejected Hobbs and Shaw dialogue because, hey, free dialogue. Army Special Forces. Well, what are you, some kind of international man of mystery? Exposition intimidation. Also, I love how they have to keep making up military and or professional sports backgrounds for all of the characters The Rock plays because he's just too damn jacked to play a normal dude. That sedative is going to become ineffective long before we're back on the ground. But Kate doesn't know where they're going. Damn, I wish I had a sedative to knock me out for the rest of the movie. Weirdos on the internet? They're calling him Ralph. What the f*** even is this movie? Weirdos on the internet are calling him Ralph. Did 13 what I'm sure were glorious months in our beautiful Greenville Federal Correctional Institute. I am guessing by the look on the big fella's face that this is all news to him. Who the f*** cares? Sure, Kate told Hobbs that she worked at Energene, but she never specified when. And even though they don't know if there's an antidote for sure, she's the best one to create it. Also, I'm gonna add 10 sins for Jeffrey Dean Morgan's performance here. He's obviously trying to ham it up as the cowboy government spook with a morally ambiguous backstory, but it's so goddamn obvious that it's f***ing grating. Lucky for us, this building has some of the most powerful radio antennas in the world. I had our team modify this one last night. So not only are they using the f***ing Sears Tower as a transmitter to call the Monstars out, they were able to get that done in one night. So let's talk about the evil lady's plan. She was engineering genetically modified super creatures in space. But just in case that station exploded and the serum somehow made it back to Earth and came in direct contact with animals that then became super animals, they pre-programmed the serum to create a reaction in the eventual possible super animals so that a low frequency radio signal would draw them to it like the Pied Piper's flute. And now she's going to broadcast that signal from the top of the Sears Tower? F*** off Willis Stans to draw the super animals to the top of the Sears Tower? Do I have that right? I mean, yeah, giant rampaging ape, but should you really fire a machine gun on an airplane? But also, how the f*** many machine gun bullets can this f***er take before he goes down? Yes, they modified his DNA and something something regeneration, but he's still a goddamn ape, right? He's taken at least 50 bullets in the last minute. He should be dead. No, what? We're getting the hell off this plane! Man, it sure is good they have the one primatologist that also just happens to be a retired special forces badass. Imagine if they'd taken this trip with, like, Connor. F***ing Connor. Last night I had a dream that Darth Vader came down from the planet Vulcan and told me if I tried to explain the last two minutes of this movie to you, it would melt my brain. George survives this. How the hell did the other two catch up with Kate? She jumped a full minute before they did, and the plane was still dropping straight down. So either she should be much higher or much lower than that. He's wounded, but he survived. A f***ing plane crash? Okay, at this point we can just assume George is a combination of King Kong, the Hulk, and a cast member of the Fast and Furious franchise. Like my grandpappy always said. Those assholes gotta stick together. Internal CinemaSins corporate motivational mantra ends up in a movie script. See, that was quite the fireball. Why isn't more of this corn on fire right now? What makes you dislike people so much? Let me tell you something. I've fought in wars all over the world. Ah, exactly what I needed in my arcade game adaptation about large animals smashing buildings. An abundance of backstory. But also, the flashback of The Rock working as a UN-backed stealth animal conservation ninja, killing poachers and discovering baby George, would have been a much better movie than this one. Good thing George doesn't feel the same way about people. Skip! Sounds like a plan. Whew, glad we wrapped up this conversation right before the plot convenience chopper showed up. Those bastards are never late. These two know more about these creatures than anyone on this planet. Do they, though? The Rock only knows George, and it's already been said many times that he's morphed enough that he's not the same anymore. And Kate tried to destroy the weaponized DNA serum and hasn't been with the company since. And that was a couple years ago. And I'd argue plenty of people at the company know more than her. Colonel, you have to evacuate Chicago. He says this with the earnestness of someone that actually thinks it's possible to do that in a few minutes' time. This operation is going to go south fast. We have to get to Chicago. The f*** are you going to do that no one else can do? Is he going to talk George down at this point? Are you going to instantly find the cure after breaking into Energene headquarters? Oh, sh never mind. That's exactly what's going to happen, isn't it? Let's not do this thing. I'm going to have to knock you out. And then you, look at me, 
I'm gonna choke you out so bad you're gonna urinate yourself. You see, The Rock can be intimidating, charming, charismatic, and funny when he's given good material. So stop giving him this Rampage, Baywatch, Furious bullshit and let him be him. I'm so pissed about this that rather than removing a sin, I'm gonna add five more. They probably have a grounded medevac chopper at the hospital. And that's why you always bring a doctor. <laughs> what? I assume you know how to fly this thing? Someone didn't see San Andreas. Copy that. Wait, Harry tossed them a cell phone and said, I'll be in touch. They got on the helicopter, and minutes later he calls from a cell phone to the chopper's radio? Does the military medical chopper have an iPhone dock that syncs with the vehicle's radio? And if it somehow does, which it does not, why would he know about it or how to use it? This might be the wonkiest thing in this movie, and that's saying something. They're never gonna get everyone out of the city in time. I can't even believe they got this many military vehicles into the city this fast. Why the hell are they flying in from the north side of the city? They were coming in from due south of the city, and we're told monsters were making a direct beeline for the tower. Did they want a quick flyover tour of Rickley Field before they joined the fight? <laughs> This might be the stupidest movie I have ever seen. Where's Warthog 1? Inbound, sir. Awesome, but what about Warthogs 2 through 50? You didn't just send one f***ing plane in there, did you? Where are we with the evacuation? 50% downtown, sir. F*** you. Here comes the giant croc no one but the audience knows about. Imagine if they hadn't spoiled him with heavy foreshadowing. This could have actually been a cool moment. It's important to stretch after a long trip. Well, that sucks. The movie surprisingly includes footage of The Rock's initial reaction to the first cut of this movie. I thought they were being drawn to the signal and would stop at nothing until they stopped the signal. Why are they wasting so much time rampaging right now, other than the title of the movie? Well, hmm, can't argue with that. They can't stop them. We gotta get that antidote. Okay, first of all, you knew this already. That's f***ing why you stole a helicopter and came here. So I don't know why you spent so much time watching this rampaging and then felt the need to restate the reason you're here. I still don't know why you went straight from sending one warthog to drop the near nukes and skipped right over the send a bunch of warthogs at once. Because when that thing first opened fire on the ape and the wolf, looked like them s*** hurt because the animals ran for cover instantly. I'm just saying. It's locked. Oh no! Who would ever have expected the super secret lab to have a locking mechanism? Curse of technology! Everything in the lab is on one system. The FBI would never have thought to confiscate a thermostat. Um, yeah, they would. They'd be able to detect network connected devices. And they saw season four of Silicon Valley. But there's a back door into the server. There's a back door into the server. Oh. Well, one single shot to the right abdomen. That definitely killed him, so nothing else to do here. They're here. Took him long enough. <laughs> God, this is so dumb. Why did Claire wait this long to leave, knowing the Sears Tower is exactly where the monsters are coming? And every news crew in the world is covering this. And the antidote was sitting in the f***ing lab the whole time. What the hell are you doing? What? Feeding the monster to the gorilla. What the f***? Straight up murder. Also, how do you know the antidote canister will open inside her bag inside the ape? How do you even know he's gonna eat her? Since the last human he screamed at, he threw off the building. Also, also, with Malin Ackerman's character gone, I guess all those Watchmen fans will have to wait a little longer for the on-screen Silk Spectre 2 comedian reunion. You know, these monsters have had no issue taking down entire buildings and wrecking all kinds of shit. Why the hell is it taking so long for them to break off the antenna of the tower? Suicide Squad said, No movie has ever demonstrated more luck in surviving chopper crashes than our movie. And Rampage said, Hold my beer. Holy shit, I forgot all about this fucking bomber. How fucking far away did that thing launch from? England? Well, it was always going to end with George saving the day, of course. But now that he's fighting the other two, it's just another giant ape movie. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ on a saltine. George, go! I really hope they include this scene when the Academy eventually gives Dwayne Johnson the Lifetime Achievement Award. Things, rocks, projectiles, monsters, excitement. Also, remember when he got shot in the torso and was super limpy and wheezy? Yeah, neither does the movie. Man, this alligator asshole really must want to savor his rock candy. George, no! Why is this movie making like he's gonna die from this? He regenerates, f***os. Did you read your own Run! Get up, you gotta move! George somehow understands this, even though we've long since abandoned the use of sign language during this fight. Oh yeah, just a random, perfectly functional, fully loaded military chopper sitting within easy running distance pointed right at my target. You mess with my friend, you mess with me, mother- Can PG-13 movies please stop doing this? I'm begging you. Jesus Christ, this is like the fourth X Machina in the last five minutes alone. Again, the movie is playing at the idea that George might die. It's offensive, really. Read your own f***ing script. He regenerates. George finally reveals what the movie's been giving us for the last 98 minutes. Well, I can tell you right now, we're not going to put him on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ha ha ha! The entire loop area of Chicago, along with countless lives, have been gruesomely destroyed over the last half hour. Ha ha ha! This is a dumb movie that's really bad. Honestly, still liked it better than Skull Island. This is my sandbox. I'm not allowed to go in the deep end. He might be okay. No, probably not now. <laughs> Dog your neck. You're crazy. I like you. But you're crazy. Houston, I have a bad feeling about this mission. Please elaborate. That's the same feeling I had about Mardi Gras 1987. Our team is the elite of the elite. We're the heart and soul of this very beach. My family is the only thing that matters to me right now. George. George, George, George of the jungle, strong as he can be. 